So we're here at uh, the Arm Tech Con 2010, and uh, you're Visual On. And so what do you do? So Visual On is an embedded multimedia software company. We specialize in optimizing codecs to run efficiently on the Arm processor. So right here, you, you're playing video on the ARM part of the processor. Correct. So the big advantage here is you don't need dedica extra dedicated hardware to run high-quality multimedia. You can run it all on the application processor that's already on the device. So, so that means that uh, some, some ARM processors come with hardware decode, but mm -hmm. uh, your solution is to actually provide, like, is like complementary or it can replace even the hardware decoder? It could be both. It could supplement the decoders that are already there with additional formats like a real or a Windows Media format that may not be dedicatedly done in hardware. Or in the case where you need really good error resiliency for streaming video, which hardware is not always really good at, software can supplement that function as well. Nice. So basically, uh, you can help uh, manufacturers of devices have like full codec support, full everything. Yeah, and with a much build, a much cheaper build of material. So you don't have to add dedicated hardware like a DSP to do all the multimedia. It can run natively on the application processor on the device without suffering in, in video quality. So right here you're playing an HD video? Yeah, so this is MPEG-4 720p resolution running on a uh, Samsung uh, Cortex-A8. So 720p, MPEG-4, not mm -hmm. H.264? MPEG-4 in this case. Uh, 720p and a pretty high bitrate. Yeah, the bitrate on this particular clip, let me just go back to it, is 17.3 megabits. And this is actually this is a H.264 video clip, it's MP4 file container. Nice. So, uh, how about the the visual, uh, what's it called, design of the player and all that? Can you customize so the, that? Yeah, you can customize that, or it can be used as a plug into a popular player such as like a Helix player or a GStreamer player. In this case, it's being uh, plugged into the native Android player on the device. So it's just a, is it just an app? No, it's, it's, it's the, it, it's the it visual decoder, so it's the video decoder, the audio yeah. decoder, and what we call the multimedia framework. So the, just the audio and video rendering, as well as integrates any new video or audio file formats that you need to... So do you need to customize Android, or can you just add an app? No, we, you can't add, you can just add an app in, in Android. The, so it's just an APK? Well, it depends on, so when you're selling directly to the handset manufacturers, yeah. typically they integrate it without an M M M APK. But in a case where you're doing an aftermarket app into the Android market, then it can all be installed via an NDK. So, so basically, uh, uh, it's using the native uh, uh, SDK to add stuff on top of Android. It's not just Java code, right? It's more than it's that. It's not just uh, Java code, it's yeah. more than that. But we're compliant with all the existing... Uh, Java interfaces in the Android software stack, so it's very easy to add. Nice. And so you support all these different uh, ARM processors, there's the ARM 9, the ARM 11, the ARM Cortex, A8 and A9. Correct. And you, do you need the NEON technology to, for it to work? Or? No, but we, uh, we take advantage of the NEON technology where it's there to make the decoding and immediate framework more efficient, which means better battery life for the, uh, for the device. But the NEON is not actually a DSP, it's something else, right? It's, right. it's separate. Right, it's native into the Cortex-A8 processor, so that hardware is there, so we go ahead and take advantage of that extra resource to make the video and audio decoding more efficient. How long has the solution existed? So I mean, Visual has been around since 2003, but we haven't actively sold product in the market until 2006. And we started out uh, supporting just ARM 9, then migrated from ARM 9 to ARM 11, and now Cortex A8 and A9. And we saw a huge input uh, improvement in video performance with Neon. We saw, on average, video improved about 3x. So we didn't think something like HD would be possible. It didn't work on an ARM 11, but when we moved to Neon, in the Cortex A, we saw how much throughput advantage there has been, and we've been able to reach all that to 1080p H.264 on many of the uh, many of the ARM Cortex How about Cortex platforms. A9? Is that going to be fast enough for anything, any codec, any bitrate, any high profile, everything? Well, you know, the video HD video 1080p, you know, 25 megabits and things like that is just very difficult to do. So. Yeah. Uh, as the Cortex A9 multi-core, uh, we're doing a lot of experimentation now on separating different decoding functions into the multi-core, and we think we'd be able to, in software, be able to drive very high quality resolution at a very, very high bit rate as the function of the megahertz of the processor increases. So will the 
complexity of the video, your drive will also increase. But is there like some some kind of official uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Real like limitations. What you, is there like a list of limitations on pasting, for example, the Hummingbird processor? Exactly what you can do, like bit rates and high profiles and all that. Yeah. So the bit rates you can support are always going to be a function of how powerful the the processor itself is. So, you know, if you want to do things like HD video at you know five megabits, ten megabits, you're going to need like a one gigahertz processor and above to be able to support that type of resolution. So it's still, uh, when you use only the ARM, it's still going to be lower than the hardware decode, usually? Well, a pure hardware decode is going to be more efficient, but when you start looking at what's the cost of adding additional dedicated hardware, like a DSP, to do multimedia functionality versus being able to do everything natively on the application processor that has to be in the device anyway, then the economics are going to drive people to do more and more stuff in embedded software. Very similar to what happened in the PC market. It's now happening with uh, mobile. Is it possible to say that your solution is kind of like a VLC for ARM? Where you, uh, what do you mean by VLC for ARM? What, what I mean is like uh, apply all codecs uh, where you just use the, the, the general processing and you right. don't need to like have extra special graphics cards or anything right. to do the... Yeah, so we, we, that's what we target as a platform, to be able to run on anybody's ARM implementation. If there's an ARM licensee, we can run our video decodes and audio decoders on this. We will take advantage of hardware where it's there on the device, like for hardware rendering, the color conversion, things like that. If there's hardware dedicated for that, we'll use it to make the implementation more efficient, but it's not always required. Nice. And uh, you really like costs all over the place, uh, all, all the ARM processors, just works. Yeah, so ARM 9, ARM 11, Cortex-A, Cortex-A9, Qualcomm, Samsung, TI, all the various ST, all the various flavors we can run across all those platforms. And you're actually showing uh, the difference in power consumption here? Well, one of the things that we showed is the, uh, that if you run a, an efficient uh, decoder on an application processor versus doing a hardware implementation with a DSP, you can be more power efficient than the software because you don't have to have the DSP powered up on the device as well. You shut down the DSP and just run the software decoder on the application processor. From the system, it ends up being more efficient. Wait, so that is actually using a little bit more than the hardware decoder, right? Well, the hardware, not much. In this case, it's actually more efficient than, than software. The point being that there's not a huge difference. If you look at a phone, what's consuming mostly the battery life is the display and the... Oh yeah, lo longer is better, of course. Yeah. Right. So it actually lo lasts, the battery lasts longer with this solution. Correct. Nice. Great. Cool. So uh, there it is. And we can, the contact is, uh, the website is fusionone.com. Mm-hmm. All right. And all codecs, everything works. There's no codec <laughs> that doesn't work? Huh? Uh, we have support for most of the popular audio and video uh, codecs, not every single one of them that's out there, obviously. How about MKV? Yeah, we have support for MKV today. H.264, uh, H264 MPEG, real, DTS audio? VP, uh, VP8, VP6. Can you do AC3 audio, AC3. DTS? We're, so we're a licensee of Dolby. So we do have support for the uh, AC3, and we also support the Dolby Mobile surround sound now as well. How about the DTS? The DTS, we're working with DTS as well. So, so it's just a plug and play. If people need codecs, they just license them and add them, right? right. So we, we don't sell DTS's codecs, but we uh, integrate DTS's audio codec into our framework. So which codec don't you support yet? Well, there's, there's some other proprietary formats that we don't have in place yet. I don't know. Well, all the all popular the, ones work. Most of the popular ones are, we already have support How about for subtitles? Today. Yeah, we have support subtitles. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see this, but in the NFL app, there's a ticker that comes down. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. thank you.